Hello, this project is not dead, and in this video I will cross Antonica via the southern route. So the project's undergone a major change, and that is I have switched to the Unreal 5 engine. There's a lot of reasons for that, but foremost is that the world building tools in that engine are just simply at another level compared to Unity now. Um, I'll talk about some of the specifics as we kind of pass through some areas. So, yeah, you know, running south out of Freeport into uh, North Row. Another little fun thing is using some Udemy courses and some YouTube videos. I've implemented the most basic of action RPG stuff into here, so I'll, I'll, I'll quickly just show a little combat. And that concludes our combat demonstration. Nothing amazing, but, you know, it's a beginning. Um, also, obviously, we're not using the, the Unreal Mannequin. I've uh, swapped out for a moderately up -res EQ avatar. Um, yeah, the quality, the rigging, the animation, it's all pretty poor. Character art isn't really my area. I mean, of course, could pull down any number of really nice character assets out of Marketplace, but I do feel like I kind of want to have all the art derivative of the original art. You know, kind of maintain that bloodline, sort of, to, to keep it looking EQ. I mean, maybe it's possible with some, some more advanced assets, but it seems like the, the further you depart, you know, buying prepackaged stuff, the more it's just going to start looking like every other demo out there. So the first major tool that uh, I'm taking advantage of here is what they call the PCG system, and PCG standing for procedural content generation. And I've used it to procedurally place every piece of foliage, rock, rock formations that you see in this whole continent. Super, super powerful. This is the sort of stuff that normally you might need to run like Houdini or some other similar kind of middleware to achieve. It's, it's all now, as of 5.2, part of Unreal. So what you do is you, you, you create PCG graphs which are kind of assembled very similar to the way a blueprint is assembled. You tie that to splines and then you, you just use a spline to sort of like define a, a space on your map. And the PCG graph will then take, you know, the set of rules you've defined and, and start populating it with static meshes. Um, yeah, so like all these cliffs you know, I've, I've got a PCG graph saying on surfaces steeper than X, you know, place one of the really big, big rock spires. Um, on, on less than steep surfaces, start using these kinds of rock formations, so on and so forth. And same with all, like, the trees and the grasses and things like that. It's all kind of uh, defined by a set of rules. What's really great about, you know, a procedural system like this is I can sit around and I can iterate on the terrain. I can re-sculpt, I can repaint textures, and the PCG system will update to those changes. I don't have to go and repaint anything. Yeah. Like in my previous video, when I was showing, like, just a little swatch of hand-painted grass detail meshes, those, st those still had to be painted on, right? None of the grass you'll see in this, and it, the continents covered in it, was painted by hand. It's all populated through the PCG system. I'll quickly.
quickly discuss, you know, some changes to this region of the continent. Obviously, uh, it's the Desert of Roe, which in the original EQ is sort of just like this linear progression. You go from North Row to the Oasis to South Row, and it's all just a big line on the map. Um, I've changed it to make it look more like the printed map in that there's sort of a, tr a triangle now, right? So North Row sort of connects to South Row, and if you go inland, you have the Oasis. Although, obviously the Oasis in the original game had coastal areas, so any of the kind of points of interest in Oasis are still over on the coast. But, but overall, the, the kind of region does have more of like a little triangle shape. A second feature that kind of works hand in hand with the PCG system is uh, Nanite, another major feature that was added in Unreal 5, and that's that's a new mesh format, a new type of a way to render meshes um, that you, you don't no longer have to author levels of detail. Um, it, it breaks down the meshes. You can throw pretty much as high a poly model in there as you like, like Z brush sculpts, whatever. And I don't really understand all the nuts and bolts of how it worked, but you know, it, it breaks down any model into into these little segments that can include other segments behind them. And so, so yeah, like it, it does a lot of what you would normally have to do with a level of detail system, like very, you know, carefully built occlusion systems. And I just does all this stuff like under the hood for you. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, so there's. There's just, you know, thousands upon thousands of instances of all these objects out there. And I'm not exactly running the most up-to-date hardware. This is just a 1080. And I... The only, the only slowdowns I experience are usually from loading data. Not, not from any kind of GPU thing. And speaking of that, um, yet another feature in Unreal 5, specifically for people building open worlds, is uh, World Partition. And World Partition is basically an out-of-the-box solution to do uh, streaming content by just placing things in the world. Um, you just place them in the world and World Partition will do the management of knowing when to load or unload assets based on where your character is in the world. It also creates HLODs, hierarchical level of detail, which is a way to combine large groups of meshes uh, to render more efficiently when they are seen at a distance. Yeah, so all these tools taken together just means that you can world build in just a fraction of the time that you, that it would have taken you just a couple years ago. Obviously we've arrived at Oasis. I'm also using the straight out of the box water system that uh, comes with Unreal. I believe that might be in Unreal 4 also. But uh, it's pretty slick. It's pretty buggy. But when it's working right, it's pretty amazing. It, it lets you have both ocean bodies, like rivers and ponds, and they all will merge seamlessly with one another and the flow maps get uh, blended properly so that you can have a river flowing downstream into the ocean and it dissipates. As well as just like, you know, nice rendering of reflections and refraction.
So just like I did in in the Unity version, I'm sticking to just diffuse only materials. Um, obviously, with a modern game engine, you can have any number of like complicated supporting maps. You can have normal maps for per pixel lighting. You can have specular maps. You can have you know even displacement maps to add like actual geometric complexity to something, but in the interest of trying to keep it somewhat similar to old EQ, yeah, we're just going to stick to just pure diffuse-only materials. With the exception of a few things where it may make some sense to, to have something shiny, for example. We're about to enter in a Thule swamp. So this, at the moment, is the lone region that I've done some experimentation with implementing localized atmospheric effects and color grading, as you can see sort of it transitioning now. So yeah, while you're in the swamp, I've brought the the fog density closer and thicker and everything's much more yellowed out. You know, kind of working off of screenshots of the original. Um, one area that's going to require, you know, some some learning on my part is how to deal with you know, the lighting model. Everything in Unreal 5 is, as far as the lighting, 100% physically accurate. So you no longer have sort of these kind of arbitrary light values that uh, um, don't necessarily equate to anything. You now set your lights in lux values, which is like a real world physical value for how much light is emitting. So, you know, like a sunlight is something ridiculous like 10,000 lux where you know a candle might be 0.5 lux um, and where it becomes a challenge is you'll go from like a bright outdoor area to a completely shadowed under the canopy forest area and you get sometimes almost black conditions but in the distance where the sun is shining, it's almost blown out. Um, really difficult to manage. Um, I know a lot of this has to do with managing the exposure settings, um, much the way a true cinematographer would um, shooting film. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to have to like dig into that. Watch more videos. Learn. I mean, when it's... When it's working correctly, it looks gorgeous. But then you'll hit edge cases like this. Things go black in the foreground, blown out in the background. 
Um, obviously, that would make it very difficult to play a game. In this run, I don't go to any of these areas, but uh, part of the change from the original to the zoneless continent is that Inethul is now a coastal area, so there is a big, long coastline of where the zone meets the ocean. Uh, I don't go there in this run, um, but it's a big zone. Um, it's bigger than the original game now, and there's plenty of deep in the middle of the jungle landscape to explore. It's not it's not all near the coast. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to create like, get lost in you know, gloomy, dense jungle. I know it doesn't quite read that way right now because we're getting so much bright lighting. But uh yeah, like I said, that's just gonna have to come with learning and experimentation. And obviously no swimming is implemented. So now we're transitioning out of Murky Swamp into the jungle of the Furot. And uh, some of those issues I, I mentioned about like extreme light and dark get almost critically bad here in some of the darkened shadowed areas under the trees. Um, and when I set up the PCG graph for this area, I cranked up the density. Um, there is a lot of trees and a lot of foliage and you know there's points when there's no sunlight getting to the bottom which is kind of a cool idea um, but without other light sources you just end up with nothing to look at. Um, would be interesting to try if I you know attached a localized light source to the character because this is all dynamically lit, none of this is baked. So if I was running around in an ultra dark forest, you know, having you know, a flaming sword, for example, would look pretty incredible, I would think, you know, like kind of lighting up the immediate foreground with that, uh, with that light source. But again, you know, like when it is working like this, like getting dappled light through the trees, 
just great. This is not your system. This is a bug. Yeah, so that was a massive loading hitch. So yeah, World Partition doesn't solve all your problems. My guess is, you know, it, it World Partition was managing stuff, but it was loading one big giant chunk of something. Um, most likely content from Wrath Mountains, because we're about to get there. Um, could be something else, but... You do have to do some of that work on your own. Um, it, you know, there's things called data layers and stuff that you can like help manage that to avoid specific hitches like what we just experienced. So here we've sort of did a bunch of switchbacks to climb our way up and you know out of the valley of the Firat and come to like one of my favorite vistas in this whole project so far. Just kind of like looking out over the jungle. Off in the distance there, you see the uh, Tower of Rot for the Dead Hills that has been extracted from you know, that much later expansion. Uh, not a lot else was done with that, but uh, it is a capability that we have with another tool. This isn't a, that isn't a lantern tool. That's uh, someone else made something called Quail that extracts. Uh, I think it's EQG file format, EQ game file format, um, straight to Blender. It's got its own bunch of bugs, but uh, you know, 
it's pretty cool extracting all the newer zones as well as the classic stuff that Lantern already can do so well. So the Mountains of Wrath, Lake Wrathir Arena have undergone a significant amount of change from the original. They're now sort of like one big mega area. Um, fortunately, we're experiencing another hitch here of some big something got loaded. Um, anyway. So kind of the way it's laid out now is, you know, if you look at, at the original Rath Mountains map, it already sort of had like little sub areas attached by kind of little valleys and channels. All I've essentially done is sort of broken those pieces off and used them to surround the lake. So you have the mountains as kind of like just this big space, big mountainous region with a lake in the middle. Um, arenas attached to the lake just as as before um, so fundamentally you know it, it's mostly the same um, there just isn't a progression of like you go through all the mountains then you go to the lake then you go to Karanas now it's more like you kind of just enter the mountains you will pass through the lake through the middle of it um, this plan's not like set in stone I mean and certainly, like mentioned earlier, with the PCG system, it's completely open to heavy revision, and then voila, all the stuff will just get populated. at the lake. Obviously the original game does not have a causeway, but like I mentioned earlier, I have no... swimming's not implemented, and it would be really, really painful to sit and watch someone swim across this thing. So, for purposes of this run, I just stubbed in a, a little causeway to get across the lake. Um, this does sort of demonstrate some of the limitations of the PCG system, like really specific landscape formations, like what you might expect to have seen on these islands. Kind of hard to achieve. Oh yeah, I can roll. Um, these would be cases where you might have to hand model a specific rock formation 
for these uh, cases. Um, but still, that's fine to have to do that, you know, when you can populate 99.9% .9 of the rest of the world procedurally. And even then, you know, like, the way these procedural systems are set up, right, like, you can have it do all this work for you, you know, later in development you can, you know, when it's, when the iteration has, has stopped in terms of layout, you can bake all that down, and then you can start, you know, really manicuring around your points of interest, um, and fixing, you know, egregious floating things, or egregious stuff that's angled off the ground in funny ways. But, uh, but early in development, when you just kind of want to keep tooling with the layout, trying new things, you know, a PCG system's just amazing for that, because you make your edits and immediately don't have to go and replace rocks and repaint grass.
descended out of the mountains into the plains of Karana, uh, as seen previously in my other video of an Anatonica run. Um, and on that one, I think I had painted just a little smidgen of an area. Here, this entire area is covered in grass, all procedurally. And stuff like this road, right? Um, that's just a matter of me painting a trail on the ground, and then the PCG system will just not populate it based on the rules that are set up. I'm also experimenting a bit here to, you know, sell the great open plane idea a little bit better of rather than just like uniformly randomly populated individual trees all over the place as it appeared in the original game using the PCG system to sort of like create little clusters, little cusps of trees um, with lots of open space in between. Be curious to see how people feel about that. You know, maybe even that's too much. Um, I think an area like this would certainly benefit from more variety of different kinds of grass because we're obviously seeing the same model just tens of thousands of times over and over again.
So as we transition into our last outdoor area, Kinos Hills, you can kind of get a, a stark reminder of what kind of non-decorated hills look like. Um, this area is obviously still a work in progress. Um, I have, I didn't want to, I want to do something different here. I didn't want to just apply the same rules and rock assets that were being used all over the place here. Kind of wanted to come up with something a little different. But uh I also don't think that, you know, pastoral green, you know, Hobbit Shire hills are appropriate either. Um, yeah. Still trying to decide what this should be to be different, but still read as a hilly place. Thank you. 